Hey, what's going on, parents? Happy Teenager Tuesday. Welcome back. Another Tuesday in the school year. It's great. Probably feels normal now. Probably, yeah. yeah. Versus I got the very beginning. You're like, oh, we're back to school. Back into the routine now. Yeah. It's funny, though, how comfortable routines can be. Yeah. I like a, a predictive schedule. Me too. Yeah. I'm thankful that we're back in to everything, yes. back into the rhythm and the swing of things for yes. sure. On the student staff, the summer is not a predictable schedule at all. Nope. Uh, you know, we all have a random Tuesday for an off day because we just spent, for you, you went on two mission trips. I did, yeah. Back to back. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So anyways, I uh, hope school is going well. Uh, we're in part three. Uh, on this series that we're doing called Identity, uh, encircled around identity. What do you do with identity? How do you discover identity? And there's a lot of mystery yeah. with identity. Uh, another thing that has a lot of mystery is actually sleep. If you didn't know this, Kira. Okay. There's a lot of mystery with sleep. Uh, people don't fully actually know why we sleep or a lot of aspects of sleep. And there's a lot of research with sleep that people just like people research and study people sleeping. And it's kind of funny because you can know when somebody sleeps well, but even sometimes they don't know why you didn't sleep well. Huh. Uh, the, BB, the BBC actually wrote this article on uh, different mysteries of sleep. And some of the things that were in there are like, why do we need sleep? Not yeah. like, do we want to sleep? Why does our body need sleep? Yeah, the whole eight hours. It, right? It, it, it. This is crazy. Not everybody needs eight hours. Some people's bodies, though, they need nine or ten hours, where some people only need six hours, and they don't know why that is. What? No, like, seriously. like. Yeah, that's crazy. From, from this is mostly Googling. Not mostly. This is all Googling sure. and trying to find, but, like, I, there was, there's variations in why some people function very well with little sleep. Others, they need a lot more. Um, like, there's a mystery of why does sleep deprivation kill you? Hmm. If you go long enough without sleep, you just die. Gosh. And they, and, and researchers don't know why. Cause like, That's crazy. Okay, and, and we eat food. There was one thing people thought, oh, we sleep because we need rest and our body needs rest to, not, to burn less calories, that kind of thing. But... After studying the body, you burn just as much, if not more calories sleeping than awake. So regardless of how much food you intake for energy, you have to sleep. Hmm. There's a lot of mystery around it. Yeah. I could keep going, but the whole point of talking about sleep in the first place is is kind of connecting back to identity and saying there's a lot of mystery in identity. And uh, there's a lot of things that maybe we won't know on this side of eternity, but there are more probably more than not pieces of our identity, our students' identity that we can discover and take mystery out of. Uh, the, uh, we can take the mystery out of the understanding of what identity is. Right. So the only way to find that truth is to know the truth. And yeah. the only way to know that truth is to know where to find it. Yeah, where to find it. Like last week, we had that GPS illustration where you're looking, what, what's guiding you towards that ultimate destination. And Kira talked a lot about scripture. And uh, we, we have a bunch of I am statements uh, in scripture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, take it, take it away. Yeah, so I think it's really important to build habits that lead us back to the truth of scripture when it's hardest for us to believe it. And so... It's easy to just think up our identity. We've talked about this in the last two weeks, so I'm not going to go much further in that. But in order to reframe it, it's harder because you have to build a habit in order yeah. to combat what your initial reaction is. Yeah, and that's so, true. Which, you know, the way to, to really find out if you believe something? It's, it's if you change your actions. If you yeah. actually, if, if your habits consistent habits don't actually line up with what you say you believe, then I would question what I believe. If I say I believe something is bad for me, but then I have this everyday consistent habit of doing the thing, then I probably don't actually believe it's bad for me. And same thing on the, on the good side, right? Like I believe vegetables are good for me. So I eat vegetables almost every single day. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. He does eat vegetables almost every single day. And steak, baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, not every day. I wish. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, but so this isn't this specific week of the podcast. I mean, I think all of these are good for you no matter what stage of life you're in. But yeah. this specific week of the podcast isn't just for students. 
it's so important that you as a parent also are starting to develop these habits and almost setting the example to be able to lead your student through this because if you don't know who you are truly as a parent then how are you going to lead your student through figuring out what their true identity is yeah and so starting out with really the the biggest identity statement yes. of them all. Yeah. This is our this is, this is our the identity. Definition. Yes. yes. We've talked about so many definitions and so many things, but this is the definition of identity. The very first I am statement that we have is I am God's child. Mm -hmm. And it's found in John 1 12. And it's so important to just set this stage with being a child of God because again that is our identity mm -hmm. and all of the rest of these I am statements that we're going to say are attributes mm -hmm. like you talked about in week one attributes of our identity but they all point back to yeah. this truth yeah it's like um, uh, there was an illustration of if you had you know 10 blind people and you put you uh, got an elephant and you had each person feel the elephant and um and try to define a elephant, you know, and like one might feel its trunk and be like, oh, it's weird and mm -hmm. kind of mushy, whatever. One might feel uh, a f the the leg of it and like, oh, it's tough and sturdy. One yeah. might feel an ear. And the the idea is like they're all describing the same thing, but they're only seeing part of the whole picture. Right. So like to understand your identity, you have to see the whole picture first and then look for attributes out of it. It's a it's a that starting point of this is who I am. And then because of me knowing who I am, this is what that means for everything else. Yeah. 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 So good. And so the rest of this list, we'll kind of go back and forth and say these, but we just want to speak this truth over you as you listen as a parent and hopefully encourage you to speak this over your student and to have conversations about this. And so no matter where you're at, if you're at a place where you can write or type in your phone, take note of the one or ones that are most difficult for you to believe personally. Mm. And if you want a copy of this list, which we'll kind of encourage you to get later on, but you can email students at hopefellowship.net and we will gladly send that over. Oh, to yeah. You. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very practical at the end of this, too. So, yeah, send that email if you want that list and then go through that list with your students. Um, Kira's going to we, we have three kind of big I am. And then some things underneath that list, too, that Kira's kind of uh, go through. Go for it. Yeah. So the first one is I am accepted, which starts with I am God's child found in John 1, 12. The second one is I am Christ's friend, John 15, 15. I am justified, Romans 5, 1. I am united with the Lord and I am in spirit with him, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. I have been bought with a price. I belong to God. 1 Corinthians 6.20 I am a member of Christ's body. 1 Corinthians 12.27 I am a saint. Ephesians 1.1 1, 1. I have been adopted as God's child. Ephesians 1.5 I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2.18 I have been redeemed and forgiven for all my sins. Colossians 1.14 I am complete in Christ, Colossians 2.10. Yeah, and I, that's, so that's the uh, scriptures for that first part of I am accepted. Yeah. And, you know, maybe maybe as Kira's reading through that, you're like, man, I needed to hear that today, you know? And we, we wanted to start with I am accepted, uh, again, because this is like the biggest starting point that then you go from there you yeah. know and we have a few more Kira's going to read these two with with a couple more examples just because of time we want to make sure and get to uh the practical side of it too so give us those last two yeah so the the second one is i am secure and the last one is i am significant so yeah and good. now what do they do with these how, you'll say this again of how they get the list, but what do they do with this? Yes. So just to encourage you guys a little bit further, um, here's your big to-do for this week. Buy a pack of note cards or you, you can use a journal to write things down. It's, it's so, so powerful for your memory. So number two would be to get the list of I am statements by emailing students at hopefellowship.net. And then number three, look over it with your student and write out the statements that are hardest for you to believe are attributes of your identity. 
And then number four, then flip over the card and write out the complete Bible verse that goes along with that statement. To combat those lies with truth, begin memory, memorizing those statements and verses with your students. So make sure that you're doing this with them. I think it's going to be a really powerful activity for you guys to do together. And we're excited to hear about what you guys get to do as a family. Yeah, yeah. Something we've talked about before is like setting up on this podcast, setting up moments, spiritual moments that you can have with your student. And this would be um, an easy to do one, a really cool one. And, and maybe you even just put on some worship music in the background yeah. to just help set the tone, you know? Um, so very practical. Parents, remember you can do this. You're not alone. God is with you. And so are we. We will see you back for part four, the last part of this series, Identity, next week. Thank you.